So today I'm going to be talking about cams, uh, how to use cams, how cams work, and some safety concerns with cams. Uh, keep in mind, this shouldn't be used as a substitute for hands-on experience or uh, simply reading the instructions that come with your cam, but I do want to give you some pointers and make you more familiar with this type of climbing gear. First I want to start with uh, talking about the design of a cam and just simply the mechanics of it. Uh, this is a black diamond camelot, so you can see it has four lobes on it. Uh, you can also find cams with just three lobes or tri cams, which just basically have one camming unit. Um, I wouldn't really recommend tri cams because they're really difficult to place, and uh, personally, I just don't feel that comfortable with them. Uh, these are much more user-friendly, uh, a lot easier to use. So, One nice feature of these cams is that the stem is flexible. So in theory, you can place it in a horizontal crack and um, it will bend if you take a fall. This isn't the best type of placement. If you have a sharp edge here, it could be kind of dangerous, compromise the integrity of your cam. Um, but it is possible to place them in that way, which is <coughs> in contrast to other types of cams. Um, some types of cams have this stiff stem, and you definitely do not want to put one of these, uh, such as this Omega Pacific Link cam. Uh, you don't want to use these for a horizontal crack because it could just break in half. So in terms of how to place these cams, uh, I'm going to do a little demonstration later, but just to give you a general idea, uh, you want to contract the cam to at least about that much uh, and no more than about that much. If you go too far like that, the cam's likely to get stuck in the crack. Uh, if you don't go far enough, uh, it could pop right out of the crack. With these link cams, they're a little bit different in that you can contract it with these first set of uh, lobes or cams and then contract it again if you need to place it in a smaller crack or even again which these don't have as much range of motion so I wouldn't you know generally use this last set but um, definitely a wider range that you can use these link cams with. So in terms of how the cams actually work and stay in place um, you can think of it as when you take a fall on the cam, you're going to be pulling down here, which forces these camming units to push outward in the crack in which it's placed. So the, the force that these camming units are exerting is actually double the force of the fall. So if you take a fall that exerts, say, 800 pounds of force, uh, these camming units are going to expand with 1,600 pounds of force, which is a lot of force, and it brings up an important safety issue. Um, you have to make sure that you don't place your cam next to a big boulder or flake that could come off, because um, with that kind of force, you could easily pry the rock just a little bit and for allow the cam to slide right out or even dislodge a big chunk of rock down onto you or your belayer. So it's very important to make sure that on both sides of the crack you have two solid pieces of rock. Um, you don't want the rock to be crumbly because this could also break through um, weaker, poorer quality rock. So in terms of clipping into your cam, you can clip directly into this first carabiner attached to the cam, um, but then that can force the cam to wiggle up and down quite a bit. So I'd recommend at least using a quick draw, um, just clipping through here. So you notice I have an extra beaner there, but that's okay. Um, that reduces the amount that uh, your cam might be able to wiggle out of the crack. Uh, but ideally, what I prefer to use for cams is an alpine draw. So, you just have a sling with a carabiner on it here. Clip this directly into your draw. And then with a nice long sling, you can clip into your, the rope into your bottom carabiner like that. And that way, 
you're really not going to influence the position of the cam very much. So here's my little makeshift crack. I'm going to use it to demonstrate how you place a cam. So uh, in this example, this crack looks pretty parallel. Uh, so that would be a safe cam placement. If the crack were to look a little different, like flaring just slightly up, just slightly down, um, outward, or even inward, you would not really want to place a cam in any of those examples. Um, the most obvious one, a uh, case where you wouldn't want to put in a cam, is if you put in the cam, as it expands, it can just pop right out of the crack. Um, and the other examples where it's flaring up, down, uh, or inward, the cam could walk its way up or down the crack. And this happens when these little lobes contract one after the other and push the cam slowly out of the crack. Um, this can be caused by when you just clip into this carabiner and the cam's moving up and down a lot, jiggling around, it's more likely to come out of the crack. So that's why I recommend using alpine draws, um, even if the crack looks pretty parallel. So when you do find a good looking crack, you want to make sure that you can contract your cam enough that it won't simply pop right out of the crack. Um, so let's test this one out. Looks like I can fit it in there. And you want to make sure, you might naturally think that you should just place the cam straight in like that, but actually you want to place it in the direction of pull. So you want to make sure to angle it like that. So if you fall, it's pulling this direction and it doesn't jerk the cam as part of the fall. Also, you want to make sure that you place the cam deep enough. If the cam's right here, it's more likely they could just chip off a little bit of rock, pop right out of the crack. Um, so you want to go a little bit deeper in the crack, make sure you have that direction of pull, and you should be good to go.